Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we've got one of our physical games episodes for you. This is the series where I show you some of the games I have picked up physically for the Switch in the last few months. We'll have a look at whether there's any mandatory updates needed onto your system storage, have a look at the box art, see if anything comes inside with it, and then I'll give you a mini review of sorts based on my initial impressions of the game. I've tried to pick a selection of games from different genres, price points and regions with a couple of imports in here to show you too and it might just give you some ideas in time for Christmas. Having said that this is a part of our 12 days of switch up series and I will put links to the other couple of episodes that have released so far in the top in comment. So what have I been picking up, how much did it cost and are they worth getting? Well let's find out. First we're going to have a quick look at a few games sent to us by a couple of companies so thank you very much it's very much appreciated. Here we have the Deponia collection sent to us by Super Rare Games. As you can see this is one of their deluxe editions, I've bought a couple of these myself in the past and they are top quality, the box is of a very high standard and as I'll show you now you get a hardback art book in here which again really is of a good quality, I won't flick too far in so as to avoid spoiling anything. You also get a CD soundtrack and a few stickers. This is Super Rare Games release number 57, but it's number 6 of their big box versions, and I believe this particular release is the first of theirs to have more than one game on the cartridge. So game-wise, you get four games on the cartridge, being Deponia, Chaos on Deponia, Goodbye Deponia, and Deponia Doomsday, all of which are classic point-and-click games developed by Daedalic Entertainment, with the first originally releasing in 2012. I do really like this model of whole collections being released on one cartridge and would be interested to see where Super Rare Games go with it next. Super Rare Games also sent us another of their games, this one's actually quite different to their usual releases and it's called Heaven's Machine. This is the first of their Super Rare Shorts series which have been funded by Super Rare Games from start to finish. Rather than having a set amount of stock, as many copies as are called for will be made during the 6 week pre-order window, which I believe is still open until the 22nd of December. The main difference with these though is that these games won't be available digitally on the Nintendo eShop and will instead release on itch.io about 6 months after the physical release. This first edition is a roguelite where you play as Jack, you travel along a train with the layout being procedurally generated, grabbing items and attempting to take down the enemies and monsters. I will put a link to Super Rare Games website in the top pinned comment if you are interested in the game shown here or any of their other offerings. We were also sent a couple of games on behalf of Skybound Games with the first being Ori the Collection. This includes the stellar Metroidvanias Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition as well as its sequel Ori and the Will of the Wisps. We've reviewed both of these games in the past and both scored incredibly well, in fact Will of the Wisps was right up there in our Games of the Year video for 2020. The beautiful visuals and extremely tight level design make these modern classics of the genre and to get both games in one package, both on the cartridge too, is fantastic value. This physical version also contains a few extras including these art cards as well as codes for the digital soundtracks and I had a look around to see where it could be picked up for the best possible price and Base.com currently have it for £32.95 which is a bit of a bargain. And finally from Skybound is Gang Beasts which is a game that many people may have played elsewhere. It gained a bit of a following at some point and is a wacky fighting game with physics based controls. You take control of what basically looks like a jelly baby and attempt to punch and headbutt opponents into environmental hazards to win the round. This is 100% a party game and whilst you have local and online options available, the local mode was where I had the most fun by far. Trying to hit each other with your character's painfully inept moveset is pretty hilarious at times, with a lot of the carnage coming from you almost defeating yourself, falling into a fire pit whilst trying to throw a punch for example. There are a few different game modes such as Melee, Football and Wave and it could be one to consider if you are having a few people around for Christmas. We were also sent Spirit Fairer on behalf of Skybound Games, a really lovely game that I have highlighted in a previous video so I won't go over it again but what I will do is put a link to that episode in the top in comment along with any other reviews or relevant videos we've made previously for the games in this episode. Ok on to the games that I have picked up now and we'll start with a very well loved one in Stardew Valley. 
This is a game that didn't get a physical release in the West initially with just an Asian release. I can't remember exactly what region I'm afraid. I'm pretty sure it was Japan if nowhere else. But a Western release eventually came out and I picked it up for £25. Which considering how much that Asian release goes for now, if you can find a copy, makes this all the more tempting. Stardew Valley manages to take inspiration from some of the classic farm life sims of old such as the classic Harvest Moon games, Story of Seasons as they are now known, but improves and refines many of the mechanics to take the game to a higher level. It has a much more fleshed out story than some of the games it took inspiration from and it uses its pixel art style well, managing to look both fairly simplistic but well detailed and brings every season to life for a strong use of colour. I seem to remember that this and Hades came out around the same sort of time in terms of the EU physical release I mean and both became hard to find quite quickly. Now whenever I see Hades it's up in the 40 to 50 pound mark whereas thankfully it appears as if Stardew Valley has kept its initial price point when you do come across it. A fantastic game and it's great that there is now an easily accessible physical version especially if you have more than one switch in the house and can now pass the cartridge around something that you can't do with the admittedly cheaper digital version. The next one was actually a birthday present from my wife from a few months back and it is the Neo Geo Pocket Color Selection Volume 1. Now I always enjoy when collections of games from an older system or series are released physically and really wanted to get this one particularly as the Neo Geo Pocket Color is a system that I've never even seen in the flesh let alone played. It includes 10 games, most of which are fighting games, including Samurai Showdown 2, Fatal Fury First Contact, and SNK vs Capcom, to name a few. But aside from the fighters, it also includes run and guns in Metal Slug First and Second Mission, ARPG, Dark Arms, Beast Buster, and Big Tournament Golf. Some of these games are available individually on the Switch eShop, although there are a few that are as yet unavailable, and I really like the digital manuals included for each game. So far I would say my favourites are SNK vs Capcom and the two Metal Slug games which adopt life bars rather than the one hit kills of the arcade originals and on the whole if you have any sort of affinity for the Neo Geo Pocket Color or are just curious about the machine as I was it's worth looking out for. The next game I bought was Metro Redux, which is a collection of the two Metro games, Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light, both of which are featured on the cartridge, no download codes or any other such nonsense, and they have any of the previously released DLC included too. These games first released back in 2010 and 2013 respectively, and are based on the 2002 novel Metro 2033 by Dmitry Glukowski. They are set in a dystopian future where survivors of a nuclear war have taken refuge in the metro tunnels of Moscow and you must look to defeat the dangers that this new world houses. Gameplay wise this equates to two very good first person shooters with storytelling and atmosphere very much at the forefront of the experience. The fact I picked this physical version up for just under £20 is an absolute bargain and having been a little hard to find in shops for a while at least where I am it seems to be easily accessible again and as I just mentioned for a very good price. The load times are a little long and I sometimes found the audio levels to be a bit unbalanced in terms of speech and music but two games for such a price gives you very little to complain about plus most of my time has been spent in handheld mode and they run very well indeed. This is well worth seeking out. Next is a game I've included due to how cheap it was just to give some variety in the prices available. It's called Inertial Drift and is a racing game with a bit of a twist but before that as I said price wise this was very cheap costing just £8.99. In terms of gameplay it's similar to something like Ridge Racer in some respects with drifting playing a big part in your ultimate success or failure but the difference comes in that whilst you must move your car with the left stick in terms of basic left or right as is usually the case in racing games doing this is like driving with a handbrake on in terms of how little movement you have and the reason for this is that you have to use the right stick to control the angle of your drift and provide that much more fluid movement you would expect in a racing game. 
It does take some serious getting used to, but it does work, and it is a nice break from the norm. There's a story mode as well as a standard arcade time attack online mode and ghost mode, and for this price, which is almost half of the standard eShop price by the way, it was worth it if nothing more for the change of pace. An update will download on putting the cartridge in which takes about 380 megabytes and brings the game up to version 1.1.3 and this adds a couple more vehicles and the cars all handle very differently. One of those games where you will need to know exactly what you are getting into but it is nice to try something with a unique twist now and then. This next game is one of a batch of five games I got from my first ever Play Asia order, and this is the Blaster Master Zero Trilogy. I was delighted to get this as Blaster Master, the NES version I'm talking about, was a game I always enjoyed back in the day, and its reimagining Blaster Master Zero was one of the first, if not the first, digital games I bought for my Switch. This collection has all three games in the Zero Trilogy on one cartridge and plays in English if you are interested but worried about a language barrier. These are effectively Metroidvanias where you play as Jason who in the first game goes chasing after his pet frog and finds himself in a far off galaxy swarming with mutants. He comes across a tank called Sophia III or Sophia III I'm never quite sure and they take on the mutants together. It's a crazy premise and its sequels see you venturing further into the galaxy and they're just a huge amount of fun. You'll find power ups for Sophia and you will have to leave the tank at times and continue on foot with these parts playing out from a top down perspective with boss fights aplenty. I really cannot recommend these games enough, I absolutely adore them even if you just pick them up digitally but I am very happy to have a physical copy in my collection as there was no such release in Europe at all and only a limited run edition in North America which I think had them all released separately. And I'll show you one more game that I picked up from that Play Asia order, another one that didn't get a release elsewhere, this is Legend of Mana. This is the fourth game in the Mana series and originally released for the PlayStation back in 1999. Whilst it's still an ARPG like the games that came before it, it changed the formula up compared to the previous games. You are on the hunt for artifacts and finding these allows you to shape the world map as you see fit, as placing these artifacts on the map screen opens up new areas to visit and quests to attempt. I reviewed this game back when the digital version released and having never played it back in the day found myself really enjoying it although I must admit I did find it all quite confusing to begin with. I was quite happy with the price of this one, obviously there's postage and possible import fees to consider as well but it was a fair bit cheaper than the Blaster Master trilogy and again it does have English included on the cartridge. If you want to have a look at what Play Asia have to offer there is a link to their website in the top pin comment and you can get 5% off of any potential order if you use our code SWITCHUP. Now this next one I bought on the strength of having never heard of it before and being drawn in by the cover, just like the good old days of the full process that went into buying most of my Super Nintendo collection as a kid. I have to say that this has been a really pleasant surprise, as long as you like arcade type games that is. It's very similar to the original Mario Brothers game with you needing to clear a screen of something to move on, in this case it's treasure chests. The interesting part though is by knocking into the chest from below you can open them and gain more points and also power ups or extra lives but of course you have that risk reward system and there being the potential of you being killed by the enemies. Each level is full of enemies and things can get very intense. There has been no slowdown on any of the levels I've played so far and it also has two game modes. You have console mode where you only have three continues but progress is saved after each stage or you have arcade mode where you have infinite continues but progress doesn't save. This is a Red Art Games release, I know initially they sold games exclusively from their website but some retail outfits now sell their games for a good price and I got this for £15 and it is one that I've returned to a lot more already than I would have anticipated. Yeah. 
This next one I bought during Black Friday, although I must say that Black Friday isn't really a thing over here in the UK. Retail websites kind of pretend that it is, but they end up knocking about £2 off of stuff at best. Saying that though, it means I got a first party Nintendo game in The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for just £30, which is fine by me. So this game first released on the Wii back in 2011 and made use of the Wii Motion Plus technology to polarise in effect it must be said, although the game itself scored very well. This Switch version, as well as presenting the game in high definition, has incorporated more traditional button controls as well as motion controls, which for me is what this game had been screaming out for, and you use the right stick to almost replicate the feel of the motion controls in terms of your sword play when playing this way. A few other quality of life features have been added, such as the autosave feature and many of the hints from companion character Fee now being optional to listen to. I'd wanted to pick this one up for a while, having played it on the Wii years ago but not really got very far due to some of the issues I just mentioned, but I was very reluctant to pay the £50 asking price at launch. To get it for £30 just a few months later was much more agreeable to me and I'm happy to now have it in the collection and look forward to finishing it. And the final game was a recent pickup from a toy shop called Smith's Toys Superstore and this is the Star Wars Racer and Commando Combo. This includes both Star Wars Episode 1 Racer and Star Wars Republic Commando and at one point these games were only available physically via limited run games and even then, as with the Blaster Master games, they were two separate entities and not a double pack like this European release from THQ Nordic. Episode 1 Racer released in 1999 for Windows and the Nintendo 64 and is a well loved game based on the pod racer scene from The Phantom Menace. Republic Commando on the other hand came out a bit later in 2005 for Windows and the Xbox and is a first person tactical shooter where you take on a squad of four, controlling the actions of your fellow squad members by using tactical commands. Whilst both games have been out on the eShop for a while, this particular physical edition has only been out for about a month over here in the UK, so the price of $19.99 I got it for is actually the RRP rather than due to a heavy sale. Plus, as well as this double pack, a second one was released which bundles together Jedi Knight 1 and 2. So for Star Wars fans that missed out on the limited run editions or have been waiting for a standard release, well now is as good a time as ever to pick these up. So there you have it, there are a few of the games that I've picked up in the last few months. Hopefully it helps having an idea of the price, even if they do differ from region to region, just gives you some sort of idea of the bargains that can be had. But at the same time, please do feel free to add any of the games you've picked up and how much you got them for in the comments section to give other people an idea of what's out there, especially with Christmas coming, it might give them some ideas for some last minute presents. As I said, there is a link to Play Asia in the top pin comment and the description if you are interested in importing any games and you can get 5% off of an order by using our code. And also we now have the capacity to sell US eShop cards on our website as well as the EU ones that we had already been able to provide. And during this 12 days of switch up period leading up until Christmas Eve, there is a 10% discount available if you use our code SWITCHUP. Again, all details are in the description and the top pin comment. Please do remember to give this video a like if you did enjoy it or if you found it useful. It will push it out there so others can find it just in time for Christmas. A quick thank you to our Patreons of course for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.